Hey folks, so today I want to talk about the difference between encode URI and encode URI component. These are two methods that we can use in JavaScript which will allow us to take some data that has special characters inside of it and convert it into the URL encoded version. And that means when you see things that have like a percent %20 or a percent %3F inside the string, that percentage sign and those two letters represent that character, but it's written in a way that's not going to impact anything. There's not going to be any systems, the browser, the server, they're going to get this data and they're going to look at it and say, okay, well, that's not anything special that I have to deal with. It's just some data, just some text. That's the purpose behind these methods. So if I have just some text and I click this button here to use both the encode URI and the encode URI component method, nothing happens here. But if this text were to include some special characters, like let's say I've got a forward slash or um, plus sign, equal sign, ampersand, question mark, these characters can have additional meaning when you're putting them inside the location bar. So if I click encode here, you'll see that the encode URI part, that one didn't affect these special characters, these specific ones, but the URI uh, component version of this has actually converted all of those characters into this encoding. So we'll take a look at the web page here. Um, we'll look at the code and see what that function is doing. So if you look down at the description, uh, you'll see a link to a code gist that has a copy of this page. I've got the three text areas, the first one where you place your text, and then the two one to show the results of the different functions. My DOM content loaded event, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing the two buttons, adding click listeners onto them, so they call the do encode or decode methods. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Once we've got that in place, these are the functions down here, and they're almost doing the exact same thing. It's just that one's doing encoding, one's doing decoding. So encoding is turning it into the special character or from the special characters into the percentage sign version. The decoding takes the percentage sign version and puts it back. Now we've got inside of here, I'm grabbing the two text areas right here. The first line, I get the text that was entered at the very top. These are the two text areas at the bottom. And then I'm going to call encode URI and encode URI component. So I'm calling both methods and writing them out inside those text areas. I'll come back and talk about what I'm doing with the link here in a little bit. Now, encode URI and the URI component, the differences between them. So they're going to want to encode anything it finds except for this list of characters. So I zoom in here a little bit to make this easier for you to read. With encode URI component, there's only this small list of characters that will not be encoded. So uppercase and lowercase, A to Z, the numbers zero to nine, hyphen, underscore, period, exclamation mark, tilde, asterisk, apostrophe, and then the uh, parentheses. Anything other than those will get encoded. With URI, encode URI, it encodes everything except this list and this list. So the difference really between the two of them is that this one is great for encoding everything. I've, I've got a URL that's inside of my data. So something that includes HTTP colon slash slash, and then the at sign and the colons and the forward slashes and the query string, all of those parts, if those are part of what I want to hide or pack inside of my data, URI component, encode URI component. This is the method that I want to use because it's going to take everything, including the URL, and turn it into the percentage sign encoding. Encode URI will encode everything except really these are the characters that you could have inside of a URL. I mean, if you think about this, yeah, I've got the forward slash. That's my path. This is the beginning of my query string. This is the end of my protocol. It's also, this is also the slashes right after the protocol. 
This can be after the username and password. This is between the username and password. The ampersand is going to be between the query string values. Equal sign is used as part of the query string. Plus can be used for spaces. Um, this is going to be the hash at the end. So all of these things could be used as part of a URL. And that's why they get excluded. So these two things do the almost the exact same thing, but this one has an extra list of exclusions. So if I take this text here, let's go back into here and I paste it inside. So I've got a bunch of Unicode characters here, the emoticons, and I've got a big long URL that includes all the different parts. So we've got a protocol, we've got a username and a password, a, a full fully qualified domain name, a port number, path, file name, and a query string with multiple values, and then a hash value at the very end of it. If I encode all this, you can see with encode URI, I can still read this part of it. The URL that I put up here, that part is left alone. But down here, all the special characters, this version of it, everything was, including all the special characters in here, those got encoded too. So if I want to include this data, I'm sending it off to the server, I'm doing something with it. This is the one I want to use. If I'm going to want to keep the URL, then this is the method that I want to use. If I need to keep it intact in for some reason, and I've got an example of that in the code, that's the other part with the link. If I scroll back up here, link, this is my anchor tag at the bottom here. At the very bottom, I've got this link, and I'm going to be setting the href. So if I do encode URI, now that's the version down here that's not going to change the URL at all. So right now, if we come down in here and we look and see, the URL is not affected. I'm going to uh, remove the these characters. So it's just this part. I'm even going to take out the username and password because if I'm not using HTTPS, the username and password are going to be uh, seen as invalid. The browser is going to try and block this. So with just this, I'm going to click encode. There we go. Encode URI. You can see it keeps it as this value. So I can actually set it as the href value inside that link. And if I click on the link, yeah, okay. I mean, it's not a real URL, but it does still work as the link. But, oh, I'm going to restart my server here. Inside of here, get rid of those again. If I'm going to do this, there we go. So I've got that version. And there's the anchor. So that one will work with encode URI. I keep the URL still intact. But if I change this to encode URI component, now, when we do this, I can still have the hash value at the end. I'm just going to remove those so it doesn't get blocked. Okay, now I run the encode, and inside my link, you can see that I now have the percentage sign 3a and so on. This is the encode URI component version, and if I try to click on this link, we can even try to open it in a new tab, I get an error. It tells me I can't get that because it is not a valid URL. And that's really the difference between these two methods. Both of them are wanting to protect you from these special characters. And it's going to turn them into these percentage followed by two letters, two hexadecimal characters that represent this. Both convert them into those special characters, the percentage encoding, so that you can send them someplace else or store them someplace else and not worry about the impact that they're going to have on the browser, on the server, or something else. Great thing that this is for, when you have some Base64 encoded data, Base64 encoded data includes uppercase A to Z, lowercase A to Z, number 09, the plus sign, and the forward slash. So, I'm going to need to encode those characters 
So I'm going to want to use encode URI component if I'm dealing with base64 encoded data that I need to package up and send to the server. I will use this method to send it to the server and then on the other end I will use the decode URI component. Or if it's coming from the server, I'm getting sent some encoded base64 data, I would use decode URI component. Encode or decode URI, that's when I know that the URL is still going to be a valid part of it. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope that uh, was clear if you understand the difference between the two of those now. Like I said, the link to this code sample is in the description. You can play with that. Use this play page to play around with the, uh, the methods. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.